Hello, and welcome to another edition of Tour of the Universe with your host, Michael Albrecht. How are you all today? Hope everybody is well and staying safe during these turbulent and trying times. Glad to bring you some entertainment, uh, however remotely it is. I wish I could be there in person and uh, talking with you directly. But I uh, hope you enjoy this show. We're going to take a tour of New England, uh, where I lived uh, several years ago and uh, went up and down the main coast primarily. Uh, I'm sure many or some of you have been up to Maine, possibly to Acadia National Park uh, and points north. Uh, the main coast is a wonderful, uh, rugged, rocky coast, very famous for uh, its picturesque coastline and stormy seas. So you'll see a lot of uh, videos, uh, several videos that I took and a lot of still pictures uh, that I think you'll enjoy as we just touch on kind of some of the main topics, uh, literally and figuratively. Here's the coastline, the main coastline that we all know and love, the rocky metamorphic coast. Amazingly, ge geologically speaking, this coast used to be attached to uh, the coast of Africa. Uh, geologically speaking, uh, some 200 million years ago or so when the tectonic plates were connected. So uh, there's been a lot of drift of the Atlantic Ocean as it has spread apart and North America has moved off to the west, of course, and Africa to the east. And here we are right now up on the coast of Maine. I spent uh, winter in Maine uh, in this old 100-year-old one, wooden house near Willard Beach in South Portland. Uh, the temperature got to uh, minus 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, so it was very icy and crusty, uh, snowy. We probably had about six feet of snow uh, all told throughout the year, this season. And um, uh, I really enjoyed being in the, uh, the icy winter weather up there. I normally live in Austin, Texas. Uh, so I, uh, but I'm originally from Washington, D.C and uh, miss the snow and uh, winter weather. So my companion Shirley and I moved up to Portland, Maine and lived in this house for a winter just to experience uh, uh, some good cold, icy, snowy weather and we got it. So taking a look at Maine here, we see it's a uh, part of course of New England. Let's break, break out our trusty little laser pointer here. Hopefully you can see that red dot. So here is the state of Maine, which juts way up into uh, Canada, into New Brunswick, and uh, uh, goes far north, really, of the Canadian border. Uh, and over here, we've got New Hampshire and Vermont, and Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. So all comprising uh, New England. Here we have a closer look at Maine. Here's Portland, Maine, and on up and down the coast uh, where there are all these peninsulas. Those of you that have been up there know uh, about the various uh, peninsulas that come down. They jut down into the Gulf of Maine. Uh, some 15 to 20,000 years ago, there was an ice sheet over uh, the northern latitudes and that, that ice sheet came down, stretched down uh, to the coast and when it uh, retreated it gouged out or carved out all these various uh, bays and harbors and uh, rocky coastlines and left uh, all of its debris behind. So really uh, dramatic uh, geologic uh, and meteorological history. Um, followed by a lot of dramatic human habitation. 
uh, starting with Native Americans thousands of years ago. Some general facts about Maine here. It used to be part of Massachusetts. And then uh, in March of 1820, it uh, was, became a state in its own right. It was part of the Compromise of 1820, uh, which brought Maine in as a free state and uh, another state in as uh, a slave state in the South. The capital is Augusta, population 1910, only about a million 300,000 people. It's about 35,000 square miles. And it's called the Pine Tree State and Vacation Land. The motto is Derijo, I lead. State tree is white pine and the flower is the white pine cone. So for thousands of years, Maine was inhabited by uh, Native Americans, a variety of tribes. Uh, a number of those tribes pulled together under what's known as the Wabanaki Confederation, con Confederacy of Tribes. And uh, we see here a book, a wonderful book on uh, the Wabanaki homeland in Maine and a lot of history there. And to the right, we see a, uh, <clears throat> an illustration from a battle that occurred in the 1600s with uh, Samuel Champlain. Samuel de Champlain and uh, it teamed up with uh, some Abenaki Indians who were part of the Wabanaki Confederacy and they fought the uh, Iroquois up there. So uh, you had all these confederations going on, alliances and so on. There was a lot of activity and of course the natives uh, <clears throat> came out on the short end of the stick when the Europeans came over. The uh, English and the, the French primarily were jockeying for uh, control of this whole region, Maine, New England, up into Canada. And, uh, and the uh, Indian tribes would uh, align with different groups at different times when it was in their interest. There still are survivors and uh, descendants of the uh, ancient uh, uh, original Native American groups uh, up and around Old Town, Maine, is the Penobscot Nation. And uh, they have an island up there. So there are descendants of the Native tribes. Moving along in history, uh, we see a wonderful vintage photo here of the Thomas May, Thomaston Sea Captains, circa 1880. And uh, it obviously was a very seafaring state and region, New England. It's wonderful. Maine Portland Head Lighthouse here on the Gulf of Maine. And well, let's take a moment to watch the surf. So again, that's the Portland Head Lighthouse just south of Portland, Maine. And it sits uh, out on a promontory of very old metamorphic rocks you see there. And the Gulf of Maine is, is pouring in, surging in. Uh, in the background, uh, the Gulf of Maine segues into what's known as Casco Bay, which leads over into uh, Portland Harbor. And off to the upper right there, you can see some of the islands, Peaks Island and Cushing Island off the coast of Maine. So one of the very dramatic uh, coastlines we have up there. Back in 1886 on Christmas Eve, there was a wreck at the uh, Portland Head Lighthouse. A ship, the Annie C. McGuire, uh, was coming back from Argentina and headed up uh, into uh, Bath, Maine for some refurbishing and dropping off supplies. And uh, it wrecked here uh, during a storm. Uh, the uh, proprietor of the lighthouse came down with uh, a long ladder and got 
over onto the ship and brought everybody onto shore safely. But that's an interesting story of the Annie C. McGuire. Uh, you can look any of the topics that we touch upon in this talk. Uh, will uh, you can go to Google, go to a laptop or a computer, and and Google any one of these topics, of course, and find links to them and read uh, his historical articles on all these topics. So we're going to just go up and down the main coast here and look at the various lighthouses and some of the uh, the features that we find. Here is Two Lights State Park Lighthouse just south of Portland down at Cape Elizabeth. Another view of that with these beautiful uh, Main, main houses and homes here with these porches overlooking the Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico, which is essentially an extension of the Atlantic Ocean. Looking off the coast, we see uh, lobster ships, lobster boats at work offshore. And driving up and down the coast, you come to all these various uh, state highways uh, to various small towns down to the uh, points on those peninsulas. Here's Pemaquid Point Lighthouse overlooking the Gulf of Maine. Booth Bay Harbor. Here's the Janet Wilson Memorial Chapel at Booth Bay built in 1917 out of the indigenous surrounding stone, modeled on an old Scottish church, built by a Unitarian minister for his wife, Janet Wilson. Cemeteries on these points contain a variety of uh, Anglo, European and native uh, persons. Heading down to Harpswell, Cook's Lobster House. And we come to Harpswell uh, Bay Cove, where there's a whole fleet of lobster and ships, fishing boats. Cold weather up there is probably in the 20 degrees uh, range. The tide is out. The tide is very significant up there. It usually runs 10 to 15 feet uh, variation throughout any given day. So you have uh, two high tides, of course, and two low tides every day. Every six hours, you have a high tide. Then six hours later, you have a low tide. And those tides run uh, 10 to 15 feet. So the ships are left stranded temporarily until the tide comes back in. A uh, fun little shipping, fishing and lobster cottage with all of the lobster boys and uh, just uh, incredible vintage structure here in this harbor where all the fishing boats are. Moving up the Kennebec River, we come to the uh, Bath Iron Works in Bath, Maine. Uh, in World War II, this was a site of frantic uh, construction of ships that uh, supplied the Americans and Europeans in the World War II effort. Nearby Bath, you have the main Maritime Museum, full of all kind of memorabilia and artifacts uh, about the maritime industry in Maine. Moving south down the coast, back toward Portland, you see Fort Gorges in the background here. This fort was built in the 1860s and uh, apparently was never really used, uh, but it, it was built to protect the harbor uh, during the uh, Civil War. Here is a ferry coming from uh, Peaks Island past Bug Light Lighthouse. 
Bug Point Lighthouse, a very small little squat lighthouse. So that ferry is headed back to Portland. Nearby uh, on uh, the uh, coast there is uh, the site long gone now of the New England Shipbuilding Corporation. But during the uh, 1940s, the uh, New England Shipping Company built hundreds of Liberty ships and other cargo vessels for the war effort. Here's a vintage photo from back in that era in the 1940s, Liberty ships. Their motto was down the ways in fewer days. And you can see here the, night, the calendar from 1943 from the New England Shipping Company. So we're just touching briefly on all these different topics. Again, any of them can be uh, gone and researched into deeper uh, via Google. Uh, your, perhaps your library would have some literature or you can get books from the library. South of Portland is Cape Elizabeth, Maine. A beautiful coastline down there. And the nor'easters would come in. We're going to look at a little video clip here of one of the great nor'easters that came in during that winter of 2017-2018. So we're in South Portland here, and the wind is howling through, pushing snow, piling snow up on the uh, streets of South Portland, Maine. Here come some people who are just down at the uh, coast behind me. Some of you may have lived in Maine or points north and have experienced uh, heavy winter weather like this. So it may bring back some memories. And this is what the coast looks like after the storms like that, the nor'easters that would come in. The tide is way up and the surf is crashing in on the shoreline there. The houses are very close behind. Here's in the aftermath of that storm and there's Shirley walking up, trudging up the road, uh, which has been plowed. Uh, so it's not that deep there, but surrounding, it's about a foot of snow. South Portland, the path down to Willard Beach at Casco Bay. And here's the beautiful, uh, the snow formations on the uh, bushes on the beach after the nor'easter has come and gone. These two photos give you a good idea of the uh, extremes of the tide. Here we are at virtually low tide and over here we're at high tide. So you can see how the tide fluctuates quite a bit during the day, multiple times. North of uh, Portland on Bradford Mountain near Yarmouth, Maine. Uh, this is the sun uh, setting uh, in December of 2017 on the solstice when the sun is at its lowest point in the sky as the Northern Hemisphere leans back from the sun and its orbit around, this, around the sun. So very short arc across the sky up there in Maine. Very short day. Sun comes up around nine o'clock in the morning and sets around four o'clock in the afternoon. And a full moon over Maine. We'll take a look at the Portland, Maine waterfront, which is very active. Lots of uh, fishing boats and tour boats and restaurants. A lot of lobstering and fishing, haddock, uh, all kinds of uh, different boats going after di different catches out there in the uh, Casco Bay in the Gulf of Maine. And they bring the, their catch back and there's various uh, outlets along the shoreline there, along the port. 
they bring their lobsters and oysters and fish and they're all there ready for purchase. Also in Portland, you've got the mast and uh, various components of the USS Portland at Promenade, Eastern Promenade Park. Uh, the plaque there shows that the USS Portland uh, it was a heavy cruiser in World War II and it saw action in the Coral Sea and Midway, Guadalcanal. It was out in the Pacific Theater. And uh, ultimately uh, the armistice, the peace uh, was signed, one of them was signed on this ship. So they brought parts back. Here we are on the ferry, leaving Portland, Maine skyline and heading off to the islands out in Casco Bay on the uh, mail ferry. All kind of supplies, people, the mail. There's one of the uh, ferries passing us on its way back to Portland. Here's the wharf, uh, the dock over at Peaks Island. A lot of people live over there and some actually commute into Portland via the ferry back and forth every day to work, shop and so on. Down the coast from Portland, you've got the Rachel Carson National Wildlife Refuge, which is a lovely tranquil place. It's home to all kinds of birds and ducks and geese and all kinds of wildlife. Rachel Carson, of course, was a great environmentalist and author who promoted uh, protecting seashores and land. Here's the uh, one of the walkways down to the seashore there. Some of you may have read her book back in the 60s, uh, Silent Spring, Rachel Carson. Here's another view of the uh, wildlife refuge down there. There's a example of one of the great New England mansions. This one at Harpswell, Maine in the winter. You can see the snow piled up there. This is Fisherman's Point back down the coast toward Portland. One of those cool mornings when the steam is rising off of the uh, ocean. Moving back up the sea, we come to uh, one of the points up there, Port Clyde, where we see a lobster boat and you can see the uh, lobster cages on the back of the uh, boat and they're rushing in because they're going to offload all their, uh, their catch in these crates and this guy is sending them up this ramp here and they're coming up into a uh, <clears throat> rental van. And this gentleman is putting these lobsters in here and it's an incredible process, a logistical process where these, uh, these lobsters will go down to Portland, Maine, get on a plane, they'll go to New York probably or Boston and then fly immediately off to all points of the globe and uh, they were telling me that within 48 hours or less, these lobster will be on tables and restaurants in Tokyo or anywhere in the world you can think of. So it's quite an amazing operation the uh, Maine lobster industry has. Here we're up in Camden Hills on the Maine coast looking out over uh, Penobscot Bay and some of the islands. Some of you may have been up there and gone to Vinyl Haven or any number of these islands in Penobscot Bay near Camden. There's a view looking down from Camden Hills on the little town of Camden. Beautiful, beautiful. Just past the uh, fall uh, foliage there. Here's a utility worker we talked with briefly. Uh, he was coming back from working offshore there at one of the islands. He was actually uh, um, doing managing uh, some solar energy panels uh, for a home over there. So even though Maine is far up in latitude, 
about 45 degrees, give or take. Austin being about 30 degrees north latitude, but uh, they still have quite a thriving solar industry up there. So this gentleman was hard at work. Let's take another look at the main coastline. You can hear the wind, feel the surf, and almost smell the salty air. That's the Gulf of Maine you're looking at out there, which is a huge inlet of the Atlantic Ocean. It's warming. Uh, the lobsters are moving north because the Gulf of Maine like all oceans is warming along with the atmosphere and uh, still a very productive body of water. The Georges Bank out there. When the Europeans first came here, they were just astounded by the wealth of, uh, of sea life uh, and uh, fish they were able to catch and profit upon. Just magnificent coastline. Here we are just north of the uh, Bush household uh, at, near Kennebunkport, Maine. If you were to turn around and look to the right, uh, you would see the Bush establishment right there. Uh, there's all kind of security cameras there and the, under, I understand the Secret Service still lives there. And if I had taken a picture of that, they would have had to shoot me, I guess. Uh, but a lot of security down there, so I chose not to take a picture of the establishment, but this is a beautiful house just north of there and looking out over the Gulf of Maine again. We are looking at one of the many islands off the coast and the crashing surf. Beautiful sunsets and skies, expansive skies out there and the surf pouring in the geese flying south. And here we are on the coastline and you can see the uh, ice formations. The ocean is crashing in and uh, it's so cold in the teens in, on this day, I believe, and it just freezes the uh, salt water. Look at this, these rocks here are just encased in ice. So we're going to move toward wrapping up uh, this, this talk uh, by looking at a small little island off the main coast right over in here. Some of you may have been to Monhegan Island. You get there by taking a ferry from Port Clyde here off of the coast of Maine. And it's about an hour, hour and a half, depending on the, the sea a uh, ferry ride out to Monhegan here. Uh, there's Portland, Maine, and on up the coast again to all these various points or peninsulas, Pemaquid Point and Booth Bay Harbor, Popham Point, uh, all these various peninsulas and small towns they were all gouged out by the glaciers, the retreating glaciers. You can see how that uh, geologic process worked as the glaciers retreated some 15,000 years ago. So we're gonna take a little uh, ride. Uh, I'm gonna show you a brief clip of video I shot as I was taking the ferry from uh, Port Clyde over here to Monhegan Island. And here we go. There's Monhegan Island out there. The seas were up pretty good. 
this day. <laughs> the Gulf of Maine. And there you go, a rather exhilarating uh, trip across the Gulf of Maine from Port Clyde to Monhegan Island. And here we are on Monhegan Island, uh, which is a tiny little island, but it's got a number of uh, small hotels and little restaurants and bed and breakfasts and so on. And I uh, hiked back to the backside of the island, which actually overlooks uh, the Gulf of Maine out there. And uh, we'll run a little video clip here we're uh, standing on a cliff, which is about uh, 300 feet above the ocean. The Gulf of Maine pouring in on Monhegan Island. Very rocky ancient coastline. There were early settlements on this back in the 1700s. Uh, natives were here, uh, Europeans, British, French came in and set up different short lived settlements. And uh, again, they were vying for control of this area and trying to wrestle it from the natives. And so there was a lot of activity going on. A lot of it regrettable, but I guess inevitable when civilizations collide. So we'll wrap up this conversation today. Uh, while I lived up there with uh, Shirley during that wonderful winter a couple of years ago, we, we read this entire book called The Lobster Coast. And I think you would really enjoy it. Uh, you can get a copy uh, going to Google or Amazon uh, if you're interested in reading about Maine history and the coast. Very extensive, well-researched book by a, uh, uh, a journalist who did a, a lot of excellent research. Um, I realize you can't copy that whole YouTube uh, uh, address there, but I put it up there to show you that you can, uh, of course, go to YouTube and you could just type in Lobster Coast and you would probably run into that link and hear the author talk about his book and go in, into much more detail on uh, his research on Maine.
So The Lobster Coast by Colin Woodard, highly recommended. And we'll close out with a couple parting shots with the tide out, looking out on a small island off the coast of Maine as the winter sun sets off in the southwest. And I will bid you adieu and say goodbye from the icy Maine coast and hope you enjoyed this presentation. Very glad to have you along. I hope it stirred some memories in those of you that have been to Maine and those of you that may return there. Thank you very much for your time and attention and uh, I wish you all well. Thank you. Michael Albrecht, signing off. Bye-bye. <laughs>